I think we all know Netflix is really bad at marketing their smaller movies, but whenever they have like a big movie with big stars, they usually do a pretty good job marketing it. I mean, for part one of Rebel Moon, like I knew when that movie was coming out, but I 100% forgot that this movie was coming on Netflix today. Thanks to Twitter and other people posting their reviews, I was like, oh, that came out today. Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, stars Sophia Batella and is about Korra and surviving warriors prepared to defend Veldit, their new home, alongside its people against the realm. From director Zack Snyder, who brought you the first Rebel Moon, but more notably as 300, Batman vs Superman, I mean, the man is very much a legend in the film community, and a lot of people love him, and if you've seen my Part 1 review of Rebel Moon, I thought it was very watchable, okay. It probably would have been a better experience in a movie theater, I'll be honest. And so with part two, I really didn't have high hopes because, like, again, the whole situation of, like, listen, we're going to release a Zack Snyder movie and you're going to watch it and review it. Most likely it's going to be bad, but hey... There's a director's cut coming because all of his movies do that. And we've already been told in August, I believe, we're getting the director's cut of Rebel Moon Part 1. I don't know about Part Part 2, but that alone, watching this movie, just just sucks. Because it's like, it's a PG-13 Zack Snyder movie, and they're all marketing off of, you know, Justice League Zack Snyder's version being so popular. Like, alright, we're going to do that from now on with Zack Snyder films. And I'm here to tell you, part two is arguably worse than part one, in my opinion. Now, of course, I'll start with the positives. Zack Snyder, once again, is a visual director, and he does visuals very well. A lot of slow motion, too much sometimes, in my opinion. But in this movie, this one really does focus more on the battle, because part one really was like, hey, get these group of people together and meet each character in like the worst character development possible. Yeah, part two is like, let's go back to the planet, let's get prepared, battle the bad guys. That's that's this movie in a nutshell, basically. But, like, visually, the movie is very eye-pleasing. Like, I wish I got to see this movie on a movie theater screen. And it had been cool. Like, the sound design, the action scenes. Like, there's some fun action scenes. I actually think the final battle, it, it being very eye-pleasing and fun to watch, the final battle with Sofia Patella's character, like, I thought that was really cool. Like, I was like, Zack Snyder, you know how to visually just entertain me. And, like, the cinematography is pretty good. The the special effects for, like, 95% of it's pretty good. The sound design, the score. I mean, production-wise, the movie is not made poorly. And it's always cool to see an original sci-fi world. And Zack Snyder has already said we're getting, like, six more Rebel Moon movies. But this is where my big, big issues just, like, come into play. Like, visually, the movie's great, but... I mean, watching this movie and just seeing Zack Snyder's vision completely being daunted down to PG-13 is heartbreaking. Like, I bet you the R-rated version will be better. I don't know how much better because in this movie, with the characters that we really didn't get great development in part one, they actually do an attempt to do care development in this movie, which I find very weird. Like, why would you do it now? Like, ugh. But the way they do it, is flashbacks, and it ruins the pace of this movie. Every time there's a flashback, I'm like, no. <laughs> this was part one. This was like, I've said in the part one, this would have been a great show. Seriously, this would have been a great show. And the storytelling here just feels so jumbled, and the pacing. Like, it's only like a two-hour movie, but man, it felt like a three-hour movie, because I was like, how much longer? And it was like an hour and ten minutes left. I was like... Oh my, and then like once the battle starts, then it's like, all right, you know, pretty cool and all, but this first half of this movie is just getting these characters together and now giving them character development. It's like, eh, and the character development we do get with these flashbacks, I really just didn't think it helped the characters. They were very, you know, basic enough. Like, it, it helped, like, the, the moments where they're in danger. You're like, okay, I care where you're coming from kind of idea, but it's not, like, deep meaningful when you're in your second movie and you're at the highest stakes, whatever. So I just found that very just 
irritating in the storytelling. And with the characters, I mean, there's nothing really memorable. I do think Sophia Patella is doing a good job. I think all the actors are doing their part. And I read somewhere that Sophia Patella like was really hurt by the first one's uh, feedback. And like that hurts my heart because I feel like I was part of the problem. But I'm just giving my opinion. In all honesty, that is literally what I'm here to do. Just give you my opinion. And I found part two to be an entertaining visual watch, just like the first one. But I think this one completely downgrades in the story department of like telling these flashbacks and then bulking that into our final battle, which is fun and all. But the actual careness of this movie and the world just loses interest in me because of just the storytelling in this specific movie. Maybe we'll see what the six other movies he wants to do in this universe. I'm going to give Rebel Moon Part 2 The Scar Giver a D+. And I know all you Zack Snyder fans might come at me for that, but hey, you know, I bet you when that director's cut come out, it will be a better movie. There'll probably be like 40 extra minutes of character development for that first movie. I would assume, because I mean, I read somewhere that like, it's more violent, there's more sex and stuff, but... We shall see if it's worth talking about. I'll even probably review the director's cut if it's worthy of it. But for the most part, I find these Roll Moon movies just very bad, forgettable. Yeah, like reading six more. That's whoo. That's kind of crazy. Anyway, guys, you guys enjoy this movie review. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.